I'm genuinely curious. Can some of you just not see the difference between those who are not part of law enforcement, those who are not considered authority figures, doing bad things? Can you not see the difference between them and police officers, law enforcement, you know, authority figures doing really bad things? He told me that I was going to be able to use Frank, the arm, man. Come on, Frank, watch. Oh, man. Frank. There he is. Ah! Officers pick Taylor up and take him to the chair and try to restrain him, threatening to tase him. That's when another officer comes in, puts on gloves, and strikes him repeatedly, knocking him unconscious. Do you honestly think that an individual person, not associated with law enforcement, not considered an authority figure at all, not part of any sort of company, not associated with anything that has any sort of structure, targeting white people is the same as police officers torturing a black man, or beating the shit out of a black man until he's unconscious, or shooting an unarmed black guy. I mean, do you have no sense of what systems are? Let me clue you in, in case you really don't have any idea about that sort of thing. Police officers are supposed to be looked up to as outstanding citizens who serve and protect the citizens of this country. They're supposed to serve and protect all citizens of this country, regardless of whether they fit an overgeneralized profile or not. When police officers treat black people badly for being black, it is far worse than when black individuals not associated with law enforcement treat white people like shit. And some of why so many black people anymore are treating white people like shit is because of some of these attitudes I'm talking about in this video. I know that's kind of hard for some of you to understand, but when people who are authority figures abuse their power, when law enforcement abuses their power, that's a lot worse than when people who are not part of law enforcement, who are not considered authority figures, abuse their power. One of the reasons for this is that authority figures and law enforcement have more power by default. It's kind of part of the position that they hold. It's part of their job to have more power than us lowlifes. Now to me, I shouldn't have to explain this. It seems pretty basic to me, but it seems that there are some people who are mentally challenged or are completely oblivious to reality or have some sort of fucked up ideology that stops them from seeing reality and somehow this blocks them from being able to see basic things like this. It somehow goes right over their heads. Someone in a police station who is completely unarmed and is completely outnumbered and is basically a harmless drunk person, not 100% complying with what officers request, is not an excuse for the police to give someone a beatdown to the point of unconsciousness. And this is regardless of whether you're commenting on a liberal news source or not. Regardless of whether the story is on the Young Turks or not. If you're getting the shit beat out of you, you're going to tend to want to cover your face in order to avoid having your face hurt more by punches. People generally want to stop people from hurting them. It's a basic human reflex. I mean, wow, what a concept. I mean, how dare someone not want to get beat up more than they already have? Wanting to cover your face from getting beat more is not resisting arrest, especially when the person has already been arrested and is in the custody of the police. Again, this is regardless of whether the story is being reported by the Young Turks. Yes, I understand that the Young Turks generally doesn't report on black-on-white crime, and that's because, quite frankly, it's not as important as when police officers abuse their power and treat black people the way that many people, unfortunately, treat other animals. When it seems law enforcement is in the wrong, the Young Turks tends to not side with law enforcement. 
They've been pretty consistent on that. But apparently that means they're b -b 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 bad or something like that, right? If you're going to defend the actions of those officers, or you're going to respond by saying, well, well, but, 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 but what about black on white crime? Then I'm going to probably refer to you as an agent of white supremacy, whether you choose to label yourself as that or not. Let me clue you in on something. There are a number of white supremacists who label themselves as white supremacists, who have black friends, who have many black friends, there are white supremacists out there who say they want equality. In some parts of the country, it's almost necessary for black people to befriend those who are white supremacists, because if they don't, they end up having to watch their backs a lot more. But you know, I guess I'm racist for stating that. Or something like that. Maybe I'm a cuck. Maybe I'm a faggot. Well, I am a faggot. Uh, maybe I'm a regressive or something, right? simply because I think police should treat all citizens decently, whether or not they match some sort of profile or not. I know, it's so edgy to think that law enforcement should be held accountable for their actions. He has permanent loss of eyesight in one eye. And I don't feel like that I was a threat to the officers to the point that they had to hit me until I was unconscious. Attorney James Razor alleges not only did East Point police use excessive force on Taylor, they discriminated against him because he's black, refusing to let him make a phone call, even though he says white inmates were allowed to do so. We want to protect people from this type of br brutality by police forces. White folks were allowed to use the phone by the police officers, even one that had urine in his pants was allowed to use the phone, Frankie Taylor wasn't. And the only difference is, is that Frankie Taylor happens to be African American. 